Good afternoon guys, again this is your Prof Zeus and for this afternoon we will continue our discussion about adjusting entries, okay? So we are going to discuss this afternoon about prepayments. Okay, what do you understand about prepayments, okay? Um, we can liken it to your cellular phones, mobile phones, right? You say it's a prepaid account, okay? So prepaid meaning you pay you pay first, you buy your load, you pay, and then after paying, that's when you are able to use it. So this one is just like that. So say for example, you uh, you, you purchase your supplies. Okay, so you you have there's a prepaid supplies, okay, or supplies on hand, or you prepay your your rent. You paid your rent at the beginning of the month for the next two months, then that's a prepaid expense. Or a prepayment of rent okay so so this is what this is essentially a payment of expense in advance so this is essentially payment made in advance if an earned revenue refers to revenue that has been collected in advance then this prepayment refers to an expense that has been paid in advance so you pay it before you can consume it okay now, just like an exp uh, just like uh, an earned income, we have two ways of dealing with prepayments. Okay, uh, let's first have an example. So transaction, say on January one. Okay, uh, so you paid twenty thousand or twenty four thousand, representing two months rent. So that's January and February. Okay, so on January one. You pay twenty four thousand, representing rents for the months of January, the rent from for the months of January and February. As I mentioned earlier, there are two ways of dealing with prepayments. One, you can say it is still an asset, or you can say it's already an expense because you are being you know too conservative. Then you say it's it's already an expense. When you say a prepayment is an asset, when you made the payment. You treat it as an asset, okay? So say for example, here, so you say it's prepaid rent. For 24,000 and credit cash for 24,000. This is not yet your adjusting entry. This is the entry when you first made the payment. Now, if you, if you will treat that as an expense, then upon payment, you will charge it to an expense. So therefore, you say your debit rent expense for twenty-four thousand and credit cash for twenty-four thousand. Okay, so you have here the entries. Okay, concerning this uh, particular transaction under the asset method and under the expense method. Now, January thirty-one is end of. The first month you paid the the rent for two months that's for january so this is where the payment was made so this is january 31 and this is february 28 or 29 okay so uh so for for this one this is twelve thousand pesos and twelve thousand pesos for the month of february that's why you have twenty four thousand in total for the rents of January and February. Now, as of January 31, what happens? Now, remember, you occupy the, the property or the space for a month. And so, therefore, you can no longer say to your, to your lesser that I, I don't want to, you know, this anymore, give me back my money. He probably would give you back your money, but only for the month of February. Why? Because you use the property for the month of January, so you you can no longer take it back. It's already the uh, it's already um, you know for the benefit of the lessor. Okay, so therefore, what happens at the end of January? This one from an asset becomes an expense, and this one since February is not you haven't used it. This is still an asset. So therefore, look for prepayment. It becomes an an expense, a mixture of expense and asset as time passes by, okay? So therefore, in our first, uh, in the asset method, 
we charge everything to prepaid rent, which is an asset, 24000 But at the end of January 31, look how much your asset is. Your asset is only 12000 what was charged was 24. So what, what do we do with this one? We need to decrease our prepaid rent and then charge it because the expense is not yet recorded, then we charge it to rent expense. So therefore, our entry would be debit rent expense for 12,000 and credit prepaid rent for prepaid rent for 12,000. Okay? Now, going, back, going here on the other side, we treated the, the first payment as an expense. Now, again, going back here, expense is only 12,000 pesos, right? But we charge how much is rent expense here? 24,000. So what do we do? We decrease the rent because it should only be 12,000. What is in the books is 24. So to decrease a, uh, an expense, okay, we need to credit the expense. So then we credit rent expense for 12,000 pesos. Now what is the debit? If you look at this one, this is recorded but the asset is not yet recorded and the asset is 12,000 pesos. So therefore, let us record the asset. Uh, debit, prepaid, rent. Okay. So this is now your adjusting journal entry under the expense method, and this is the adjusting journal entry under the asset method. Again, if you look at the entries, okay, it's essentially uh, the exact opposite, okay? If we try to look at the P-account analysis, just like what we did for an earned rent. So we, we have here, rent expense and prepaid rent. So we first debited prepaid rent for 24,000 and debited, uh, based on the adjusting entry, we will debit prepaid rent for 12 and credit, sorry, we will debit rent expense and we will debit credit prepaid rent for 12. So therefore, at the end of the, of the month, the prepaid rent will have 12,000 pesos as the balance, which is actually the same as what we have here. Asset is 12 and the expense is 12. Okay? Now what about in this expense method? Okay? So we have here the rent expense and the prepaid rent. Okay? So therefore, debit rent expense, 24,000. Okay, and then in the adjusting entry, this is again your adjusting entry. We debited prepaid rent because this is the unused portion. So therefore, this is 12,000 debit and credit our rent expense for 12,000. So therefore, how much rent expense we have here? 12,000 pesos and prepaid rent is also 12,000, which is essentially the same as what we have under the asset method. So in, uh, our conclusion is, whether you use the asset method or the expense method, you will arrive at the same amount of prepayment or asset and of course the expense portion. Okay, whether you use the asset or the expense method. I would suggest you, you, you draw your own timeline for, um, because this will aid you in terms of analyzing the details of the problem. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, now let's go to depreciation. Now, what is depreciation? Remember that company buys assets. Okay, they buy asset to assets to help them operate the business, no, so they can sell their goods or services. Now, for instance, they bought a car, a service vehicle. Okay. When it was purchased, say January 1, they purchased it. So January 1, they purchased a vehicle. Okay? Now what do they do? Uh, what do they do with uh, what would they do with the vehicle? They will use it, right? So they will use it. Say for example, uh, January 1 to January 31. 
of the same year. So they use it for a month. If they purchase this for 1 million, after a month of using the asset, can they still sell it for 1 million pesos? Answer, no more. They could sell the asset, but for a lower price. Why? Because they already used the asset. No one will, uh, no one uh, is willing to buy a used asset for the price of a brand new asset. At the price of a brand new asset. Okay? So definitely, the buyer will not agree that the, that the vehicle would still be 1 million pesos. Now, in accounting, we recognize that fact. That as you use the asset, the value of the asset, the asset eventually declines or decreases. And we call that depreciation. So we depreciate the asset to recognize the decline or the decrease in value of the asset over time. Because of the usage of the asset, exposure to the elements, eventually it loses its value. Okay? So for this purpose, because you're still in basic accounting, we will just make use of the straight line method. Okay, so straight line, when you say straight line, it's just a straight line. Now, in, in applying this with depreciation, it just means that, you know, um, you are saying that uh, the benefit I received from the first year to the last year of the, of the useful life of the asset is essentially the same. That is the, that is the reason why we are using the straight line method of depreciation. It may apply on certain assets, may be applicable on certain assets, but... For others, depending on the usage of the asset, it may not be applicable. Okay? So there. Now, in using the straight line method, we have a formula. Okay? So this is cost less estimated salvage value divided by the estimated useful life. Okay? So there's no problem with cost. This is the amount that you purchase, no? Amount of purchase of the asset. The estimated salvage value actually refers to the value of the asset that you can sell it for. Okay, say for example, at the end of the first year, you can still sell it for, you know, for 990,000, the 1 million. Okay, so that is the estimated salvage value. Why do we deduct it from cost? Because you will be able to recover it. It's not, it's not uh, equitable to, for you to depreciate the, uh, the, this, uh, this estimated salvage value, you know? Why? Because you can you can uh, recover this from the from the sale of the asset. Now, estimated useful life. So this is the maximum amount of life that you can use the asset. Although there are certain assets that you know, say we say that you know we can use it only for five years, like vehicles. No, but if you look at the streets, you would see vehicles even as old as 20, 25, and even 30 years old. Okay, but that is acceptable because accounting involves estimates. Okay. So this is the this is the um, formula. Now the estimated useful life can be in terms of years or in terms of months. Okay. So let us have an example. Assuming on January one you purchase a vehicle for one million pesos. Okay. And this vehicle can be used for five years. Let us just assume there's no salvage value for that. Okay. So what is our depreciation? Okay. For the year when it was purchased. So from January 1 to December 31. So that's one year. So therefore the cost is 1 million pesos. Estimated salvage value is zero. Divided by five. So this is 200,000. So this is your depreciation per annum or per year. So if this is say for example 2020, at December 31, the company will recognize depreciation expense for the amount of 200,000 pesos, okay? Now, if they say, how much is uh, per month depreciation? Therefore, you just divide this by 12 months because there are 12 months in a year, okay? So that is the concept of depreciation, okay? Until the end, at the end of this one, say 2025, what will happen? The asset will have a zero net book value. Okay, so how do we now uh, record this transaction? We charge it to depreciation expense. This is your adjusting entry. So depreciation expense for 200,000 and credit your accumulated depreciation for 200,000. Okay, so at the end of first year, you say cost of the, of the machine or equipment is one million. 
Then we deduct our accumulated depreciation. That is for 200,000. So at the end of the first year, the net book value is 800,000. Okay? This is what you call net book value. Okay? Now at the end of year two, so this is still 1 million pesos. Now you have, again, the company will do this entry at the end of the year. So accumulated depreciation, which is uh, part of your uh, balance sheet account, okay? At the end of first year, there is 200,000. Okay, and at the end of second year, another 200,000. So therefore, the balance of this now is 400,000. So less 400,000 at the end of second year. So therefore, the net book value becomes 600,000. So what will happen on year 2025? At the end of the useful life of the assets, so there's 1 million pesos of uh, cost minus 1 million pesos of accumulated depreciation because this is now the end of the useful life. So therefore, the book value of the asset becomes zero. Now, if the asset has a, an estimated salvage value, at the end of the useful life, then the carrying value of the asset will be equal to the estimated salvage value, okay? Uh, I hope you learned something from the two adjusting entries that I presented to you, and I'll see you again uh, tomorrow. Bye.